Hey YouTube, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to do a van tour of my stealth camper van. Um, I've been on YouTube now for almost two years and I've never really done an actual van tour video. I see a lot of van tour videos on YouTube and uh, I've made a lot of videos about um, the way I built different parts of my camper van. Um, today I'm going to do a whole tour of my van. So check it out. My name is Doug. I'm a retired school teacher. I built a camper van out of an old service van. I would take you with camping, fishing, going to the beach, going to baseball games. I'm going to teach you how to save some money. Welcome to my channel. Welcome to the Holiday 10. So starting with the outside of my van, my van is a 1999 Ford E150 cargo van. It's the commercial model and uh, it's got a six cylinder engine and it gets about probably 20 miles to the gallon. It doesn't get real great gas mileage, but uh, I bought this van off of or from a used car lot in Modesto, California. And I've had it now for a little over two years. And this used to be a service van. This used to be an Xfinity service van. And they sold it at an auction. And then the car dealer that I bought it from uh, sold it to me. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so the body of the van has some dents here and there, like in the door, and then on the driver's side door, there's some dents over on that side. You can still see, if you look real close, the reflection of where it used to say Xfinity on the side of the van, and uh, there's still remnants of Xfinity in the phone number on the back of the van, and I haven't done much to try to uh, change that. Um, I've left it the way it is because I want it to look like a service van. When I bought the van, it did not have the rack on the roof. I added the rack and I made a whole video about that. Um, the name of the video is going to be right down here at the bottom. And I'll show you more about that rack in just a second. So one thing about this van when I bought it was that it had a leaky rear seal. And uh, I took it in and had it at a mechanic and the mechanic changed the rear end. It needed a new rear end. It's not an actual new rear end on the van. It's a uh, rear end they got from the salvage yard. And that cost me about $2,000 to have the rear end replaced on the van. So this is the roof of my van. Now, as far as the roof goes, there was some rust, a rust hole right here in the roof of the van. I made a whole video about repairing a big rust hole right there. I used Bondo. It's right where the mount is for this rack. There was a big rust hole here. And the name of that video is Rust Hole Repair. I'll put the title of that video down below. Um, on the roof, I added this rack. I made a whole video about that. And I'll put the name of that video right at the bottom right here. I got two uh, small solar panels one's a 40 watt one's a 50 watt and they run to two batteries that i have inside the van both of them are separate and independent one goes to one battery and the other panel goes to another battery and i kept them 
uh, independent for a reason and I'll talk about that here in a minute when I go inside also I have a mount for a wind turbine I will show you how that mounts that's one of my more popular videos on YouTube and the name of that video I'll put right here below and also I installed a strobe light on the top it's a safety caution light I made a video about that as well and I'll put the name of that here so you can find how I installed that I also have um, a porch light and a flag mount okay I can put a flag on the roof sometimes when I go camping I'll put an American flag out or some other flags and the wiring goes in the van through these two glands and I have I installed those glands when I installed the solar panel and also when I installed uh, the wind turbine I have all that in a separate video and I'll put some links to that in my description for you guys anyway that's the roof of my van installing the rack and the panels and everything is pretty easy so this is my caution light and um, it comes in handy for situations like when someone's outside your van and you want them to go away or something like that or if you're stranded i have the switch to that caution light up here in this shelf and when i flip it on right here it's pretty bright The daytime is not so bright, but at night, this thing is really, really bright, and it could help you if you're stranded on the side of the road. The porch light, this is my porch light right here, and the switch to my porch light is right here. Flip it on right there, and it comes on. It's not so bright in the daytime, but at night, it's a really bright light. I made a whole video about how I installed that. So I'll show you the front, the cab of my van, which is kind of boring. Um, it's just your standard front of the driver's compartment of the van. Always keep a, a vest and a clipboard up here. It kind of makes it look more like a, a service van. And I like that for when I'm stealth camping. I can sleep anywhere in this van because somebody just thinks it's a service van with some construction people parking somewhere. Um, I have these seat covers that I ordered off of Amazon. And then the driver's seat, I replaced the whole seat cushion and I made a whole video about that. That's one of my more popular videos as well. And uh, I'll leave a, a title of that, that video right here for you guys. A lot of people don't realize about these vans is that they don't have a glove compartment. This is the airbag and there's no glove compartment here so in these vans the glove compartment is this uh, silly cubby hole which is kind of good and kind of bad for me it gets all cluttered i end up throwing a lot of things down in here right now i've got different things like electrical tape and charging ports things like that and then i've got a couple of hands-free camera links that I have in here and uh, I added an extra 12 volt outlet this is the one that comes with the van and then I added an extra one and it's where I charge my phone and I plug in Bluetooth speakers for when I want to listen to music inside this cubby is this where your stereo your radio would go there was nothing here when I bought the van but I made a whole video about installing a cheap car stereo this car stereo only cost me about i don't know twenty dollars on amazon it's got its own speakers and it actually is powered by a cigarette lighter plug-in i plug it in there i could also plug in this car stereo to the jackery battery if i wanted to um, it allows me to uh, manage the power for my 12 volt batteries to the van and uh it's just a cheap car stereo. I didn't want to put anything in there that was nice and expensive because I don't want anybody to break into it. This is an old van and it uh, has the old style locks in the doors. It's got the old style crank windows. It's pretty easy to break into this van. Um, behind the seat, I keep uh, some of these clubs. Every time I go to uh, 
baseball game or something like that in Oakland. I'll use the club to lock up the, the steering wheel. And this used to have a metal wall with a gate. And I took out the gate and half of the wall, but I left one half of the metal wall. It allows me to put magnets. These maintenance signs I stick on the outside of the van sometimes when I'm stealth camping or parking wherever I want to park. It makes it real easy to uh, look like a service van. And also on that metal wall I have my YouTube channel magnets that I put on the side of the van. I'll go ahead and take those out and show you what those look like. So this is one of the maintenance sign magnets that I put on the side of the van. I've showed this in a YouTube video before and uh, I'll put a, a name down at the bottom of the screen here of that video. But these help you uh, park when you want to stealth camp or park somewhere on the side of the road. So this is where I store the, the magnets for my YouTube channel on this metal wall right here. It's behind the driver's seat. It's kind of hard to see the magnets are on the wall here I'll take one out right now and put it on the side of the van so you can see what that looks like so when I'm going on a long trip somewhere camping or stealth camping if I'm driving down the highway I always put out my signs sometimes I got to put an additional magnet on the corner of this one it gets kind of bent but that's where I put my YouTube signs Okay, so on the front of the doghouse, I bought one of these uh, pocket things. It goes on the back of a seat, but it turns out it wouldn't mount to the back of my seat here very well because it requires a headrest for the top to strap to. But it's got all these pockets and loops on it, and I put a lot of extra sunglasses and my flashlights in those pockets. Um, it comes becomes kind of cluttered, but that's where I store a lot of different junk. And uh, the front of my van is kind of messy, but I know where everything is, so it's all that matters to me. So sometimes this uh, center console right here acts as my uh, glove box. I'll put that in between the two seats sometimes. Inside here, I store a lot of different things like uh, uh, flags and different papers and paperwork and there's some tools in there like screwdrivers and things like that and then most of the time I just keep it right here behind the seat because it gives me a good place to keep this bread box and a lot of times when I go on a trip I'll put food in here like bread and tortillas and things like that it's got a little drawer here I ordered this bread box off of Amazon it was pretty cheap it was about $25 and uh, the way I keep it there when I'm driving so it doesn't slide around is there's a bungee cord right here and I put some hooks on the back of this. The bungee cord goes around the seat and it hooks to both sides of the bread box to one of these little hooks right here that keeps it from sliding around and going anywhere when I'm driving down the road. And uh, anyway, so behind the driver's seat, I also keep uh, one of these little folding TV tray tables. It's just big enough to fit on your lap. And then this is a steering wheel table. I ordered this off of Amazon. It fits on your steering wheel right there. Keep that behind the seat of this folding table. On the back windows of my van, I installed this white vinyl and it keeps a lot of the heat off the glass and also it makes it so that uh, no one can see in. You can see out, but no one can see in. The downside is, is at night, um, if you have lights on inside the van, people can see through that white vinyl window covering. Um, but I have some curtains inside that I cover those windows or I close for that. So let's take a look in the back of my van. We'll go from the back to the front. So this is the back of my van right here. And uh, this is kind of a storage area. It's also my bathroom. So when I did the build of this van, I wanted to have a space in the back of the van to put a porta potty or a luggable loo 
in case there were two people, me or my wife were together in the van, I could go ahead and put a curtain across the top and close it in case somebody needed to use the porta potty in the back of my van. Um, right now, I have this kind of a storage area. I put my fishing poles here, and this is a hat rack or a coat rack. I've got a lot of hooks up here where normally I have a lot of hats hanging. This is also where I have my charge controller for my wind turbine, and this is a charge controller for one of the solar panels, and this goes to one of my batteries in the front. I also have a additional charge controller in the front for the other solar panel that goes to my other battery. And then I've got a light inside here, and these are my curtains that go across. This is my curtain that goes across the back windows. On this side, I have my medicine cabinet, all my toiletries I keep in here. This was another bread box that I ordered off of Amazon. It was real cheap and it fit in here. I have a 12, excuse me, a, a 120 volt. This is a hookup that where I can go under my van. I have a extension cord that goes to hook up for full hookups for electricity. I'm gonna go ahead and set the pluggable loo in here so that you can see what that looks like. So this is my luggable loo and I keep it right back here and I use some bungee cords that I have stored in this compartment here to keep that all strapped in. But normally I have a whole bunch of other things in here because this becomes my garage. I store a camping chair, my tackle boxes and everything that I take with me camping gets stored back here. It kind of gets stored around the luggable loo. I'll show you what that looks like in a minute. But let me go ahead and uh, show you what it looks like to sit on here so that you can see how much room there is in this area. Inside the luggable loo, I store all my things for using the restroom. I've got black garbage bags, air freshener. I've got hand wipes. I've got my TP. I've got a lot of different things for cleaning if I need to use the restroom in an emergency. Usually I don't use that. I've only used that a couple times in an emergency. And uh, normally I have no problem finding restrooms when I'm out stealth camping or on the road. So this is how much room you have in here. You got headroom. I'm not hitting my head on the roof or anything like that. I have to do my business. I know this looks kind of odd or strange on video, but I just want to show you guys what that looks like. And I originally planned to have a curtain going across here to draw, but it turns out my wife doesn't go any, do any camping with me in my van, and I've been by myself, so I've never actually installed a curtain yet. I have a closet right here. It creates a separation wall between my living space or my sleeping space and the back of the van. So this originally I had planned on dedicating just for a restroom to bathe and do business and things like that. So uh, this was going to be kind of the bathroom. Okay, so this part of my counter in here is my water storage cabinet. I just keep gallon jugs. I don't have a sink and I don't have a dedicated water tank. I keep gallon jugs of water and uh, a lot of times if you got to pee, these become great pee bottles um, and then I dispose of them in the garbage. But I usually keep about three gallons of water in here and then I'll stack some extra empty bottles on top of those for uh, pee bottles or whatever, but I'll use that water in here for my bathing. Usually when I bathe, I bathe out here in the back of my van. I keep a shower curtain right here. It's just a cloth drape. And what I'll do is I'll use these magnets right here and I'll drape that cloth drape across here. And I will use this as my shower area. And I've made a lot of videos about how I do that. One of them was called Oaky Shower when I was camping. And I've also showed uh, showering at the beach in Half Moon Bay. I'll put some names of those videos down here at the bottom of the screen if you want to see how I shower in the back of my van. 
I keep my fire extinguisher right here. I used to have it mounted up in the front in this cubby up here where I keep my ice chest, but it kind of got in the way, so I moved it back here. Um, I don't usually cook in the van. I've got two different camp stoves. Sometimes if I do cook in the van, I will come outside and stand out here and I'll put the camp stove right here on the floor and I'll cook some things right here in the back of my van. I always like to have the uh, smells of the cooking go out the back of the van. I don't like them in the van because the cooking smell gets into the cloth and the bedding and things like that. So um, I usually cook back here and that's why my fire extinguisher is right there and it's in a good spot. Okay, I mentioned this 120 volt plug right here. Um, the cord for this is just an old extension cord and there's a outlet box that you would have in your house it, the extension cord goes to i ran the extension cord all the way up in my wiring up here and i haven't finished the ceiling yet i left this all open because i want to be able to access all this wiring if i need to anyway this yellow cord right here is extension and it goes down and it goes through the floor of my van and i've got a galvanized nipple down below my van where i can plug in if i go camping at uh, a campground that has full hookups and i made a whole video about installing this 12 volt i mean excuse me 120 volt outlet and the name of that video i'll put right here at the bottom of the screen let's take a look under where you can see where the nipple is. so this is under my van and that's the galvanized nipple right there if i unscrew that nipple there's a plug inside there electrical plug that I'll plug an extension cord into that will go to full hookup electricity for my van. There's my plug right there. So on top of this toiletry cabinet right here, this is where I keep all of my DVDs, my movies. I have a TV mounted here in my van. I have it covered up with a t-shirt right now, but I keep all my DVDs in here. And I also have an inverter right there that's connected to one of my 12 volt batteries. And that's where I plug in my television and also my DVD player. So I have DVD movies that I watch sometimes when I go camping. Also, I have an antenna right here that's hooked to my TV. I can take this antenna out, put it on the roof if I want to. But most of the time, I get pretty good reception if I'm in a city, a big city like Oakland or someplace like that. If I'm camping up high in the mountains or wherever where there's no reception, I just watch uh, DVD movies on my DVD player. And I keep my DVD player stored under my bed there's the box for it down there okay so aside from storing my fishing poles back here in the back i also store my wind turbine back here i made this mount for it but i'm gonna try to show you how it hooks up real quick i just pull this up out of here and there's my wind turbine it's got a tail right there that i have to mount and it goes into this mounting bracket on the top my bracket for my wind turbine that's how i mount it um it folds down i made a whole video about how i built this and i'll leave the title right down below at the bottom of the screen here so you can find that but i just use a strap here it's got a locking shelf arm that flips this up take out this wire store that inside here flip this up and then wind turbine mounts in the top of this and that's how it looks okay it can turn with the wind i have a tail that i mount on the rear of this and again i've made a lot of videos about using this wind turbine for generating power at night and uh i'll leave a link to that it's one of my more popular videos a lot of people like to watch that video and they have a lot of questions about the wind turbine um, it's fun it's a nice little fun project anyway uh, i won't go into much detail about this you can see the other videos that i've made um,
Anyhow, that's how the tail mounts. Just screw it in like this. And then I'll plug in my wires right here. Generates power. So again, this is uh, also my storage garage. This is the way it looks with nothing in here, but I'm gonna show you what it looks like when I pack in my tackle boxes and all my other things. These are my tackle boxes for when I go fishing. They go here, and then I use some bungee cords to make sure they don't go flying around anywhere. And hook them to these hooks that I have. I also keep some caution cones. Sometimes I'll use these if I'm on the side of the road and I'm bathing or something, stealth camping. Caution cone. I have these leveling blocks. I keep these stored right here. So this is where I store my camping chair. I just store it right here. And I've got a bungee cord here. And I'll just hook this around. That's where my camping chair goes. Now I also keep um, a flag pole here for mounting a flag outside and a squeegee for when I need to squeegee or clean off the solar panels. So this is my flag pole. I keep it right here. And this is my squeegee. Keep that right here. Keep a US flag so I can mount outside. I always keep that going right back here behind my chair. I always keep a power strip when I have full hookups or something like that. When I need an electrical cord with a power strip, I have it and I keep that right back here with my fishing poles. Keep that right there. So this is an old piece of plastic shelving and I store this under my luggable loo. Um, I've showed this in my shower videos. Anytime I take a shower, I don't like to stand in the dirt and I don't like to stand on a gravelly parking lot or anything like that. So what I do is I take this piece of plastic shelving and put it down on the ground. That's what I stand on when I'm bathing or I'm taking a shower. And I keep that right here on the floor and then I just put my luggable loo Right on top of that. And this is where this sits. And I still have enough room to sit in here if I need to use this in an emergency. Even with the tackle boxes and all this stuff stored in here as my garage, I still have enough room to use the luggable loo if I need to. And then what I do is I just use some bungees here, strap in the luggable loo, make sure that it doesn't go anyplace. Now typically what ends up happening is, is I get going on a trip and uh, I end up throwing a bunch of different things back here. Sometimes I'll throw my backpack with my clothes back here on top of the luggable lug loo and I'll strap it in or I'll strap it to the hat rack. Um, I've got a dirty clothes bag that I put back here. That starts to fill up with dirty clothes. So this area gets kind of cluttered sometimes when I'm on a trip, but for the most part, it works out as a good storage area and if I need to use the luggable loo, I can always just pull stuff off of this and use it if I have to. So I keep a dirty clothes bag right here and then also have a shopping bag. I just hook them to this coat rack. I also have some fishing stuff, a fishing krill that I hang here and then all my hats hang up here on this hook. I also keep a seat like this um, if I'm going to sit at a picnic table on a campsite or if I just want some extra cushion anywhere I'm sitting, um, I keep this nice thick foam gel cushion and I store it right there on my luggable loop. So let's take a look inside and see what the sleeping area, my couch slash bed, my counter space and all of that looks like. 
So this is my couch slash bed. And uh, I got a three inch foam mattress here with just a sheet on top of it. And I keep all these blankets in here. Um, this opens up and I store my batteries under here. There's two 12 volt batteries. They're independent of each other. They're not hooked together. I'll show you that in just a minute. And also I have some storage under there where I keep some blankets, a sleeping bag, a pillow, and uh, other electronical components and some tools and things I keep under there. And um, let's go ahead and take a look. Also, the back of this folds down and it completes a fuller size bed. And I'm not gonna take that down because that's real heavy and it has some legs on the back of it that fold out. If you wanna see how I made that and what that looks like when I pull it down, um, that's another one of my more popular videos is how I built the, the bed, closet, and the back bathroom area. The name of that video I'll put right down here at the bottom of the screen. Again, that's one of my more popular videos. You can check out that video and see what that looks like when I fold the whole thing down. It's kind of heavy. When I built this, this is made out of some spare desktops, both the back and the, the lid here our desktops from a company called Ballard Design. My wife wanted a bigger office desk, so I took the desktops and I made the bed out of it. And this is what it looks like under my bed. I just use a stick to prop this up. It doesn't have any fancy uh, hydraulic hinges or anything like that. So this is what it looks like. Um, I have some storage that goes into this cubby down here. I usually keep shoes and a backpack for clothes down in there, but I can access it from the top. I can also access it from the front. And I keep a small fan in there and an emergency AM FM radio. Um, and then I keep some pillows, a sleeping bag and blankets under here. I actually have a 12 volt electrical blanket in here. I keep it in the back back there. And then I keep some things for working on things wiring and electrical components and batteries for nine volts or c batteries down there and then these are my two 12 volt batteries i got a black one this big one came with the van when i bought it and then i have this red top battery these are not connected together they're independent of each other and i have this uh Okay, so these are my two 12 volt batteries and I keep some tools in here when I gotta disconnect some things and uh, I have an isolator. The isolator is only hooked to my red top battery and the wiring for this was already here because they originally, um, Xfinity had this wiring coming up through the floor and it was going to this big black battery but they did not have an isolator so I made a whole video about putting in this isolator and the name of that video I'll put here at the bottom of the screen if you want to see that now as far as my solar panels are concerned I have one solar panel that goes to one battery and then I have another solar panel that goes to the other battery and my wind turbine is only connected to one battery as well so I also have another charge controller down here for my red top battery okay the charge controller i have in the back goes to this black battery i have a fuse bar down there this whole wiring thing looks kind of messy and at some point i'm going to straighten all this out and redo it but uh, my battery cables for the red top they have these quick disconnect levers and again you can see all that in the video that i made about installing this isolator this isolator goes to the front battery the starter battery of the van and it helps preserve that starter battery so that i don't drain that if i don't need to so also this red top battery has has so i also have two inverters one inverter for the black battery one inverter for the red top battery this is my inverter for the red top battery and then the inverter that i have in the back of the van goes to my black battery and my television and i showed you that earlier when i showed you where i store the dvds movies well i got an inverter back there that goes to this black battery so i've got kind of two independent systems here one solar panel for one battery and a wind turbine and then one solar panel for another battery with an isolator and then i have an inverter for each 
battery or each system. They're not connected together. And the reason for that is they're not the same kind of battery. And when I built this, I just used what I had. I didn't go out and buy new things. I already had this black battery and I already had the red top battery. So I built it as two independent battery systems. So far it works out for me. It's not a big deal. Um, I don't use a lot of battery power anyway. I use battery power to charge up my phone. I use battery power to watch TV sometimes, but not a lot. And I also use battery power to charge up my uh, iPad and things like that. But um, I don't use a lot of battery power. I don't live in this van and I only go out in this van on the weekends. Basically, um, I go out on short trips. so. I don't need big solar panels and I don't need a lot of battery power. So um, you can leave me any comments you want about this system. I made another video about the, my 12 volt electrical system and I'll leave the name right here at the bottom of the screen of that video. You can go visit that video if you want to. Um, anyway, that's under my bed. I've got a speaker back there, it goes to my Bluetooth. I've got another speaker up under here this is my compartment where my ice chest goes i'll show you that in just a second now i've got this fan installed right here that goes to my big black battery that's a napa van and it gets installed in like a semi truck semi truck driver's truck and i don't really like that van a lot it doesn't rotate well it uses up a lot of power so i don't use that fan very much also uh, my switch up at the top is just a toggle switch and I actually broke it so right now I'm going to fix that up. I built this shelf up here. It becomes cluttered right now. I've got a, a Bluetooth speaker up there and I've got a little lantern and I've got uh, um, a, therm a thermometer up there. Okay, so when I go out in my van, I don't use a sleeping bag a lot of the time. I usually just use these Indian blankets. I've got a sheet on the bed, but if I get cold, I've got this uh, really thick blanket. My parents gave this to me. It's got leather on one side, kind of a sheep, fake sheepskin on one side. This keeps me super warm. It actually makes me sweat. So I use that sometimes, but not a lot. And uh, I've got all these pillows that I store in here. Um, I actually probably have too many pillows for my van. Anyway, that's the way the bed looks. As far as flooring is concerned, I just bought a cheap piece of carpet from the Home Depot when I built this and I stapled it down to the floor. This has a plywood floor and it's not real thick. It's only 3 8 inch of a floor. A lot of people build their vans with really thick, thick plywood on the floor. And I always thought that was kind of overkill and was too heavy. So I just went with a cheap piece of 3 8 plywood and I put some cheap carpet down and I cut it to the size I needed. It works for me. There isn't a lot of insulation under this floor. There's some strips of styrofoam insulation. The walls have some uh, insulation board in it and the ceiling. I've got these lights that my, my boy chrome put in his van from van city van life that's where i got that idea i love those lights right there and uh there is not a lot of insulation in the roof just a, a half inch piece of foam board on the walls and in the ceiling i textured the ceiling and painted it i wanted it to look kind of like a hotel room thought that maybe my wife would go camping with me if i made it look like a hotel room with textured walls and it turns out she doesn't want any part of this so i've got a curtain here that i made out of a cheap a cheap uh, bathroom drape it goes across here like this and i've got a strap here that keeps it together i kind of just wedge it behind this cushion and then i made another curtain for the side out of an old tablecloth and I keep that here. It kind of just goes across like this on a track. I didn't invest a lot of money on some things. I built with what I had and I kind of built cheap. So one of the first things I did when I bought this van was I replaced this step. 
the original step here was all cracked and broken and I ordered this off the internet and this step cost me about $200 they're not cheap and uh, it was easy to put back on anyway that was a brand new step that I put in so I have these pieces of foam these are for mechanics they work in garages with these and I use these to save my knees. I take these with me wherever I go. I even have a longer one that I keep under the, the bed mattress. And I use these when I want to crawl around in here. It helps save my knees a lot. Anyway, I was going to show you my counter space. So this is my counter space, my cabinet storage area. I've got a long cabinet down the bottom I'll show you what I have in there and I've got two doors that open out if I had to redo it and do it all over again I would not have made it so the doors open out I would have made it a different way of where they slide or something like that they kind of get in the way when they open out and uh, I built this small cabinet up here storage I store cups and paper plates and things like that up there my TV is mounted here I've got a cover with a t-shirt. I made a small separation wall right there. And behind that is the toilet cabinet that I showed you earlier. So I made a whole video about how I built this counter space and I'll leave the name of the video right here at the bottom of the screen. And uh, I have a, a light system here. Uh, it just adds ambiance. It's the old license plate that came with the van. I had to change it, get new license plate. These are just uh, running lights that you see on a boat. They're boat running lights. I have red, green, and blue. They're kind of fun to turn on at night. Also, when you're stealth camping, uh, colored light is uh, better for you to use so that you won't be necessarily seen in the van because colored light is harder to see when you're stealth camping. I made a whole video about light waves and the name of that video i'll leave at the bottom of the screen i talk all about that uh that uh light that i built right there so this countertop is just plank wood that i got at the lowe's and um i made a video about this it's just verithane a couple layers of verithane and i painted the trim around here painted all green because that's one of my favorite colors for my favorite baseball team the Oakland A's I put a bottle cap opener here for when I'm drinking beers and um, this is where I put my my ice chest I put my my uh, cooler here I just put a stick here to hold it and this shelf slides out and again I, I made a video about the counter space and I showed you how I, I built this I made this on a video and i'll put the name of the video on the link here i'm going to get my cooler show you what it looks like i have an orca cooler let me grab that and we'll put it in so this is my orca cooler i believe it's 20 quarts and uh it's roto molded it's a lot like a yeti cooler and it's a lot like a pelican it works really well holds ice for several days um it works good for me because i don't go on long trips i've only gone one long trip in my camper van i went to arizona for spring training in march of 2023 this last year that was the longest trip i've ever taken in the van but um this orca cooler keeps everything nice and cool it's got a lot of dust on i should have cleaned it anyway i'll show you how i put this in the cubby so it fits under my counter space just like this this is the cubby where it goes and again it's on this sliding shelf i can slide it out like this and I can slide it back in and then all I have is uh, this bungee cord goes across here so I strap it in right here there's a hook and then another hook over here that keeps it from coming out also I have this dowel I just drilled a hole right here in the frame and I put that dowel right there and that dowel keeps this from sliding in and out while I'm going down the road. Um, it works fairly well for me. I've got this small storage cabinet that I built up here. Uh, doors open out and I keep cups and I keep some paper plates in there. And in the back I've got a, a pocket, jeans pocket, 
nailed or screwed to the wall and that's where I keep the remote controls in that pocket for my television and the remote for my DVD player. And I thought that was a pretty good idea. It works out well for me. I keep instant coffee up here. I do have a, a 12 volt water heater or boiler. This goes into a coffee cup of water and you plug it into your Jackery battery, but it uses a lot of power. I can heat up cups of water for soup or coffee or whatever. I drink a lot of instant coffee. Sometimes I'll make regular coffee, but not too often. Usually I go to Starbucks on my little trips. Anyway, this is how this closes. And once again, um, I'm not crazy about the doors that open out. Uh, if I had to do this all over again, I would make it a different way to where the doors either slide or they open up, something like that but when they open out, they're easy for you to bump on. You bump your head or get your shoulder caught on them and things like that. My TV is up here and it's on a swivel. I keep it covered with a half of a t-shirt and these bungee cords hold it in there from flopping out when I drive because it's on a swivel. And let me take that off and show you. Okay, so this television is cheap. It's Insignia. I ordered it off of Amazon. It was just a little over a hundred dollars not much more than that it might have even been under 100 dollars. anyway it's a 120 volt television um, i plug it into an inverter that i have back here this inverter goes to my black 12 volt battery and when i want to use it i just plug it in right there this will come out i have it mounted on a folding arm for an rv and uh, the arm was pretty expensive. It was over $100. I don't know if you can get cheaper ones or not. And uh, I think the folding arm was actually cost more than the television did. I think I paid about $125 for the folding arm. Um, uh, for whatever reason, uh, that's what I went with at the time. I couldn't find another one that was cheaper. Um, at some point, I think I'm going to redo this whole thing because I want to have a shelf in here to permanently have my DVD player right there so that I don't always have to pull it out of the box. I keep it stored down here in this cubby under my closet and I want to have it just kind of permanently under my TV in some kind of shelving system or something like that. That's a project for another time. I also have uh, a CO2 carbon monoxide sensor that I keep back here in the back. Okay, so my counter space I've talked about a little bit. So under my counter space, I have these two storage cabinets. There's a big one on top and a long one on the bottom. So the big one on top in here, I keep a lot of stuff. It's kind of cluttered. I have two camp stoves. I've got this flat camp stove. I've got a frying pan, I've got a water teapot that I'll use to make my instant coffee, storage containers, my lighter, I keep some wet wipes here, and then you know, an oven mitt for when things are hot on the campfire or the camping stove. The other side over here, I've got some tubs, and in those tubs I've got different things to cook with. I keep uh, aluminum foil and I'll keep my spices, salt and pepper or whatnot. Some plastic cups. Usually I keep my bathing towels in here for when I want to shower or take a bath. And uh, some bungee cords. Um, just various cooking things that I'll keep inside those two tubs. I don't take a lot with me when I go on my trips. And then this long cabinet folds out like this and I just have some magnets that I rigged up on this metal piece. So I have another camp stove. This is a taller camp stove and then in this box I have a it's a heater. It's not a real heater but it's just a metal tube that you buy to set on top of your stove to try to heat up the inside of your van and I keep other stuff under here. Uh, the long bars that go for the jack are stored up under here. And I keep some instant coffee, some tape, different things down in here. It's just a long storage area. It's kind of cluttered. There's not a lot of room because the wheel well is inside here. And it uh, doesn't allow me to store very much. This isn't very deep. Um, I don't know if you can see the wheel well back there. It's covered with some aluminum type covering. 
anyhow that's where I keep the jack and things like that that I have to store okay so I have a closet that I built this is my bed and then I have a closet that I built here that separates the back area where we have my luggable loo to use the restroom and again I talked about this earlier that I had planned on putting a curtain across here anyhow I built this closet right here it's not a lot of room inside this closet and it's only about I'd say eight inches across and I can hang a few sweatshirts and a jacket in here if I need to um, I like it because it gets stuff out of the way got a little mirror right here I keep a comb in this pocket this is just a jeans pocket that I tacked up here and uh, let me go ahead and hang some things in there so you can see what that looks like okay so I've got a shirt and a couple sweatshirts hung up in there so you can see how much room there is not a lot of room but uh, it works for me I usually keep a heavy jacket in there and these couple sweatshirts and a dress shirt um, sometimes when I'm out on my trips I need a dress shirt and uh, sometimes I've been out and I don't have one so I keep one in here all the time so that uh, I can go out to a restaurant if I want to or go into a casino do some gambling it's always nice to have yourself a nice button-up shirt ready to go so that's my closet um, not a lot of room but it works as a separation wall and it works for me so so a lot of people when they build out their van they build the bed across the back of the van and that's one way to do it and uh, I chose to build mine long ways like this because I like to use it as a couch I like to sit here and be able to look out my side door of my van it gives me a front row seat to the ocean or a canyon or wherever it is that I'm parked I can sit in my van and look out of my van sitting here in a couch if I had the bed across the back you can't really do that um, unless you sit a chair or you sit some pills or something on the floor and then you can look out your van um, sometimes it's raining and you have bad weather but you still want to be able to look out at the view like of the ocean I'm traveling down highway one near Half Moon Bay or in between Half Moon Bay and uh, Monterey down the coastal highway I pull off on the highway going south and I park right on the side of the road and I can sit right here and I can have a full view of the ocean and I drink my coffee eat my breakfast or my lunch or whatever it is I just like having the bed this way because it acts as a couch and I can have my view outside of the van so it works out for me I don't know maybe someday I might do a rebuild and tear this whole thing out and try the bed across the back but uh, I don't see that anytime soon um, anyway this is the way I have it for right now Hello YouTube, there's my Christmas tree and it's Christmas time. Right now it's December 20th, 2023. That's about it for this video. I hope you liked the video. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so you get notifications. If you want to support the channel, uh, there's a link in the description if you want to support the channel, if you like what we do here on Holiday 10. I hope to make some more videos soon to get out and do some camping, stealth camping. I've had some health problems lately and I haven't been able to go out and do that. So hopefully here within the next year, I get a chance to go out and do some of that and make some more videos for you. I probably left out a lot of things on my van tour. If you have questions, send some questions to me down in the uh, comments section. And uh, until next time, thanks for watching my video. Peace. Merry Christmas.